We'll likely do another one. At James Russworm is among thousands of people in the North American video game industry laid off over the past year. Uh, we go into that meeting and you're told by your manager, today's your last day, goodbye. Workers say anxiety is growing. I might get the email saying like, no, we no longer need you. Uh, there's simply no security. Just this week, the video game streaming site Twitch announced 500 job cuts and software company Unity said it's cutting 1,800, a quarter of its workforce. We've always been a very ambitious company. At a recent conference, its co-founder alluded to difficult times. And, you know, this ambition kind of also drove us to kind of try things that maybe we shouldn't try. And we failed at some things and, and uh, you know, it's been a tough year. When demand soared in the pandemic, gaming companies grew, invested and hired. Those sort of big risks that game studios took haven't paid off in, in sort of profits. So a way you show profits is, is not by making more games, making more money from the games, but by cutting your costs. And so the workers, the people who are actually doing the day-to-day -day work of developing the games, they are laid off. There have also been challenges like inflation and higher interest rates. Our industry as of 2021 was contributing $5.5 billion toward Canada's GDP. But in an industry worth billions in Canada, industry advocates say the cuts don't tell the whole story. Even with you know, on very unfortunate layoffs in some cases, we're still most likely at the highest level of employment uh, that you know, we've seen even since the pandemic. For Russ Worm, though, the layoffs highlight the need for better worker protections. He was among the first unionized video game workers in Canada. If we can sort of bring in a lot of those protections for our workers, then we don't have to go through sort of this uh, boom-bust cycle. He says they just want workers to have stable careers long-term. Alison Northcott, CBC News, Montreal.